What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lance Clark and today we're going to be talking about the DJI Pocket 2 and if you can use it as a professional video camera, some of the things I liked and that I didn't like about it. Let's get into it. All right, so a little bit about this camera. It is a very small pocket-sized camera, hence the name Pocket 2. It has a three-axis gimbal on it, so you get nice, stabilized, beautiful, cinematic-looking footage out of it. It can shoot 4K60. It also has a Decine-like picture profile, which is a very flat picture profile, which is kind of like Log, but not quite as good as Log. So, yeah. So just from the statistics of this thing, it seems pretty good. I'm like shockingly, I was shockingly surprised at how lovely it actually seemed on paper. Now, I get very nervous when companies say, oh, it's a 4K camera, because that little badge of 4K means about this much to me. I'm a lot more concerned in like dynamic range, how quickly the image falls apart, how sensitive the ISO is, and how noisy it gets when you get into higher ISO, and like things like that. That means a lot more to me than saying, oh, it shoots in 4K. Now, the day after I bought this camera, I, I was actually shooting a wedding, so I decided what better place to test this camera out than at a wedding. The couple had requested that I film their ceremony in its entirety, so I set my main camera up, my Canon camera up, got the audio all dialed in, hit the record button, made sure that we were all good to go. And then I ended up using the Pocket 2 to go around and get different angles as well as detail shots of decorations and stuff like that. So I used it a little bit more as a B camera, and as I was using it, not gonna lie, I was kind of having a bit of a mental breakdown because I had never used this before. I had hardly even turned it on, and I was shooting these people's weddings with it. And now, all you get is this little LCD screen, and that's what you have to use to basically do all your composition and your exposure and all that kind of stuff. And now, for that stuff, it works just fine. For focus, you can't really tell if it's something is in focus on this little tiny screen. Now there is an accessory that you can use to plug your phone in so that you can like have your phone attached to it like this and use your phone as a screen. And I really should have done that, but I didn't. I was a little bit more caught up in just like the moment and going and I didn't think about, oh, just plug your phone in, it'll be fine. <laughs> so. I was very nervous about everything being in focus, but luckily after reviewing the footage, it actually turned out really, really good, like surprisingly good. We were in a bit of a challenging lighting situation at this venue, and so one of the concerns was like how well it was gonna hold up in that venue, and it turned out very, very well. I was very shocked. It was completely usable footage. Now, the one thing that I will say about this camera that I really didn't like whilst shooting this wedding was that natively this camera is a very wide angled camera. And when you're shooting people, you typically don't want to shoot super, super wide. So it has a digital zoom feature, which I found, which was lovely. But I'm very nervous to use digital zoom because I know that for most other digital zoom things, like on your cell phone and stuff like that, when you zoom in, it tends to really ruin the quality of footage. Now, this does shoot in 4K, so because it shot in 4K, I knew that in post, I could zoom in to like 200% and get a lot more narrow of an angle if I wanted to. So I ended up using the digital zoom and then in junction with the zooming of 4K in post, I think that the footage actually turned out really, really nicely and it's completely usable. Thank God. <laughs> now, after the wedding, I decided to put it through a little bit more tests. I decided to shoot in a like completely dark lighting environment, and it performed exactly as I expected it to perform. It didn't get a super ton of noise in the image, which was fantastic. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. So, yay. So then I decided to shoot in like a proper lighting environment and just test the camera and just see how much I like using it just as a whole. And it turns out that it's actually really quite good, like kind of shockingly good. The, the quality, the image and everything like that is 
great. I really enjoy it. And I think with like proper lighting, like if you had like studio lighting and stuff like that, or like really nice lighting environments, this thing would just absolutely kill it. Not only is it a stabilized camera that just fits in your pocket, but the quality is really good. So that's like two check marks in the can you use this as a professional video camera kind of situation. Some of the things that I really don't like about this camera, mainly because of the size, because of like how small it is, that means all the accessories are also very small. This is one of, this is like the joystick accessory and it's like the size of some people's fingernail and I just know that I'm going to lose that at some point. And the other accessories are the same damn size. So you know that at some point you're going to lose those accessories and then you'll have to replace those accessories and that sucks. So form factor in that regards kind of isn't the greatest. now. The other thing that really kind of nags me when I was using it was that some of the features of this camera aren't available in all shooting modes. So using the D-Cine like, which you don't have to use all the time, I just prefer to use a flatter picture profile. You can't use some of the fun little gimmicky features like the follow focus and stuff like that, which isn't the end of the world, like who really cares? But like, it'd be nice to be able to use those things all of the time. Like if they're a feature of the camera, like let me just use it always. Now, something else that I don't like when I was shooting, something that I found that I didn't like. Yes, you can zoom in and yes, it shoots in 4K and you can crop it in post. You should never, ever, ever rely on cropping something in post. That is not an okay thing to do. It's same thing of like, oh, I'll fix it in post. Same mentality, not good, bad day. And with that being said, there isn't any like closer focal length attachments for this yet. Maybe they'll do something eventually. Maybe they'll like have like a 50 mil kind of attachment, which would be dope. But right now you just get a really wide angle, digital zoom, or they have another, another, or they have another attachment that gives you an even wider angle. So it's kind of like you get wide angle or you get a super wide angle a not so wide angle and then like a digitally zoomed in angle so i would like there to be a little bit more options maybe something that can like punch into like an 85 would be really dope from this and so just in that regards shooting people i'm going to shoot a lot more like wide out detail-y kind of like establishing shots rather than those like zoomed in beautiful face talking narrative personal shots which sucks because I like shooting personal shots so in that regards it gets a loss. <clears throat> now with that all being said could you use this as a professional video camera? Yes actually if d depending on your job depending on your shooting style 100% as a B cam yes like 10 million percent. I don't know about you, but have you ever, like, when you're carrying a lot of camera gear, or if you've ever seen like a wedding photographer, they have the strappy thing, then they have their cameras dangling here, and then they like grab them and they're like doing the ninja moves, switching them back and forth. That's all well and good, minus the fact that it gets really heavy after a little while. Now, video is a little bit different and it sucks, just that little bit extra. Because with video, we can't just have our cameras dangling beside each ourselves because we want to get the most stable cinematic looking footage possible. So we tend to use stabilizers or gimbals or monopods or tripods. And if you have multiple cameras, that means you need one for each of those things. So you're either rocking like a gimbal and a monopod at the same time and that gets heavy. So being able to have this, which is on a gimbal and have it fit in your pocket, doesn't take up much room or much weight. That's fantastic, I absolutely love that. So B camera all the time. Like this is going to be the like, this will be the B camera of the century, I think. It's great, it really is. Um, am I saying to never use your own like proper like Ronin S ever again? No, use that, use that as your like main camera thing. But if your main camera has to be used for something else, at least you have a amazing backup in which you'll still get very stable footage. Now that that is out of the way, you couldn't use this professionally for one reason. And that's because of how it looks. Now, I know this may be a really bad reason, but it's the same kind of mentality as if I said, okay guys, I'm here to shoot your wedding. 
Same idea as this. This is a little bit better, so it is passable for a B cam. This is not passable for a B cam, this is. But if I was to shoot your entire wedding or something with one of these two cameras, in the end, people would have the same kind of mentality of, I hired you to be like this big professional videographer guy and you showed up with a toothpick. So that's the kind of idea behind it, which unfortunately really sucks. No matter how good the picture quality is, it will always fall short of a professional video camera simply from the aesthetic of it. Now, there are a lot of other things that I wanna talk about this camera and a lot of other like comparisons and things that I wanna do with this camera. And I will be doing those in future videos. So if you want to see more about the Pocket 2 and some of the other things and what I get up to and maybe some professional uses that I didn't know that maybe it had, please subscribe, leave a like, do the comment, do the things that everyone tells you to do. Or don't, see what I care. It's fun. <laughs> I would really appreciate it if you did, and as always, I hope that you have the most fantastic of days. It is now winter here in the Canada, in the far north, and uh, so please drive safe out there, and I hope that you have the most fantastic of days. Peace.